August 30th, 2018, San Francisco. The Sales Development Conference. The first and only live conference 100% focused and dedicated to sales development. Join over 300 of the top minds in sales development for a full day of learning, forging new relationships, and creating the next generation of sales development excellence. This year, we have dedicated tracks for sales development leadership, as well as a track for individual sales development representatives, including a full day of ultra-useful hands-on training. Bring your whole team to get the tools, research, and connections you need to accelerate your career and push your sales development program forward. Accelerate your growth at the Sales Development Conference 2018. Go to tenboundcom slash conference to get your tickets today. That's tenboundcom slash conference. You're listening to the Sales Development Podcast, the only audio forum focused and dedicated 100% to sales development. If you care about growing your skills and getting more new sales appointments, pipeline, and closed one deals, you came to the right place. Subscribe to the show on YouTube, iTunes, or Spreaker, and be sure to go back and listen to all the episodes for the best strategies, tips, and tactics out there on running a high-performance sales development program. And now, your host, founder, and CEO of TenBound at TenBound.com, David Delaney. Hello, 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 everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Sales Development Podcast. I'm David Delaney, your host, on the line today with Matt Finneran, co-founder and CEO of Note Ninja. Matt, how are you doing today? Hey, David. Uh, I'm doing really well. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Awesome. You're joining us all the way from North Carolina. How's, how's, uh, how's life out there today? I am. Uh, <laughs> life is pretty good, actually. It's about, it's upper 60s, almost 70 degrees today. So uh, no complaints. Uh, we had a little bit of snow about a week ago and, you know, the state kind of shuts down and that happens. But It'll quickly rise back up to 70 degrees and everything's gone. So no complaints. Awesome. Awesome. I love it. I love your perspective of things outside of our little Silicon Valley bubble that we have going here. Matt, if folks have not met you yet, can you give us a little background on you know how you became to your co-founder and CEO position at Note Ninja? Yeah, sure. So uh, yeah, we started Note Ninja about a year and a half ago. I'm originally from North Carolina. Uh, went to UNC, but I actually started a different company before this. Actually, it was in San Francisco. So it was so it was a really cool experience because I started a different company called Spark Central, and it was B two B social media customer service for the enterprise. And so moved out to San Francisco for about four years, um, and I just moved back a few years ago to start a family. So you know, and so then moved back here. It's sort of a little more affordable. You can you can get a little more square footage and, and raise a family in, in, a, in a little different way than if you're in the middle of downtown San Francisco. And so then came back here and started kind of scratching my own itch around sales because I, I helped grow the whole sales uh, department at Spark Central and, you know, started working from that. Very nice. And, and take us back. Spark Central is a very successful company. How did you get involved in that? You know, what problems are you guys trying to solve in starting Spark Central? Yeah, so uh, that was kind of right when I was first starting uh, my career in software. Long story short, before that, I was actually working in super yachting. I worked on Richard Branson's uh, super yacht for a little over a year. And then I kind of moved back to North Carolina, got in, the, got in the software scene, and was doing sales actually at a different social media software company that's no longer around. But I ended up meeting my co-founder, and we kind of talked about this, this need that was in the social media space around customer care. So uh, some of Spark Central's clients are, you know, Delta Airlines, Netflix, a lot of like large B2Cs. And so we kind of, I, I sort of saw this need. Um, we decided to partner together, started the company in San Francisco. So I, my wife and I, we sold everything we had and jumped into a U-Haul and drove across the country to San Francisco. And so then we started, you know, approaching large B2Cs like Delta around this problem. And sure enough, they had it. And, uh, you know, we landed our first couple of big flagships and kind of went off to the races and started, you know, raising funding and doing all that. That's amazing. And you were actually running the sales side of things uh, at, at Spark Central? Yeah, that's right. Uh -huh. Yep. Up until about the last year, we hired a VP of sales. But I was there for, I was scaling it for the first three and a half years. So yeah. Amazing. And, and did you have sales development on the team or was it mostly a full cycle sales team? 
Yeah, no, we had SDRs and AEs. We didn't have sales engineers and the AEs would run the demos. But yeah, we would, we had SDRs that would come in and do a lot of the prospecting. At least in the very, very beginning, that was what I was doing. I was doing everything. Um, <laughs> and, you know, at, at the beginning stages, everybody does everything. You know, you don't really have an option to specialize because there's too much to do. So that's, you know, that's how we started at Spark Central. And it grew to a kind of a traditional sales model with SDRs and AEs. And now at Note Ninja, I'm repeating, right? I'm, we don't have any SDRs uh, at the moment. Moment, we're kind of running the whole sales cycle, um, but we're actually looking to hire one of our first SDRs this year. So, oh, nice. You know, okay, starting to build. There you go. If you're listening to North Carolina, you know, <laughs> give Matt a call. <laughs> give me a call. Look me up. Definitely. I mean, and so after running that program, you know, ha- having success at Spark Central, then what what problem did you see that you wanted to solve with Note Ninja? Yeah. So actually, this is a, you know, it was interesting while building the team at Spark Central, you know, I was running a lot of the demos, right? And I, at the very beginning, and we landed a couple of really large clients that was really nice. And whenever we hired SDRs and AEs, uh, they would have to know the story. Right. And so that was part of our kind of training was that you had to know the story of Delta Airlines and like how did what was their problem? What were we solving? What did the whole outlook look like? And so, you know, what what I ended up doing is, you know, we had one moment we were hiring six SDRs and they were all starting in about a month. And so I just thought, you know, you know, be really helpful is actual, you know, kind of game film, game footage. So why don't I just start recording my demos for a whole month and then I'll throw them in sort of a, you know, a shared folder. And then when they all get hired, they can listen to everything. And so. After about a month, I had about, you know, 20, 25 demos and everybody got hired and I was like, everybody go in there and listen to all these calls. And uh, <laughs> they, I don't know, I think a couple of them listened to like one or two, but you know, they're all like an hour long and there's a lot of stuff in there that, that wasn't necessary to listen to, but there were these like key moments of truth that I really wanted them to get to. Anyway, so it was sort of a, a, a nascent idea where I just thought, you know, why don't we have some sort of game film, real live footage of sales going on, you know, alongside other things like, you know, playbooks and those sorts of things that are really helpful. But why don't we actually get to learn from, you know, the top reps in a company or anything like that? And so once, you know, my time at Spark Central was coming to an end, I was moving back to North Carolina, I just kind of came back to that idea. And I just sort of started thinking, you know, what if we could have these moments where, or, you know, I'll, I'll tell you another example, like my my brother-in-law is a really – he's probably the best salesman I've ever known, and he uh, he works for Salesforce now. He's worked at a couple of different places, but you know, he always told me, and he tells everybody, he goes, whenever you start a new position, right, your first day, first thing you need to do is go look at the leaderboard, pick the top three guys, and go ask them all out to lunch and buy their lunch and just – just drill them on, hey, how are you at the top? What did you do? What can I know? Like really try and glean from these top guys, what are they doing and how are they different or why are they consistently at the top? And I just thought that was a really, really cool idea. And so this is, and, and you know, when you're one of those top reps, they they kind of all do their own thing, right? Like it's really hard to kind of wrangle top reps in because, hey, they're closing deals, they're doing it their way and like you don't want to rock the boat sometimes. So this is kind of another cool way to solve that because if we're capturing all of those top reps calls, then they don't they don't actually have to do anything different. Like now, you know, yeah, definitely take them out to lunch and, and, and do that. But but now you actually don't have to take any of their time. You can actually go listen to their top meetings of some of the large deals they've closed and that and how much, you know rinse and repeat, right? Keep, keep gleaning off of their meetings. So that's, you know, it's sort of amalgamated from a couple of different pieces, but you know, long story short, I've been in sales, software sales for like six or seven years, you know, carrying a bag for the most part. And so it just kind of came out of my own need. I love that. I, that's some great nuggets right there. The finding those top three people and that, that could be for anything, you know, a new job. If you're in a new industry, if you're, you know, just yep. trying to get in shape, you know, you find some people that are in shape and go ask them, <laughs> yeah. um, stuff like that. And and now it's so easy because, you know, we have YouTube and, you know, Google and you could just find that information, but it's also great to make those social connections with top, you know, leaders in the industry right. or whatever you're trying to do. I love that advice. And then, you know, the question that I would have is when you tape those those 20 demos to show the new SDRs or have the new SDRs listen to, and then they listen to one or two and you're like, ah, I don't know what really happened there. You know, how did you, how did you like quiz them on what they learned or did, did they have some kind of test that they had to pass or was it just kind of like, here, go listen to this stuff and then hopefully it, something will stick. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it depends on whether it was the first time I did it or the last time I did it. Okay. Uh, the first time I did it, it was very much so kind of like, go see what you can figure out. But then as we kind of got more structured, you know, the way that I like to think about it, uh, we always, I always say in a long, if you have an hour long meeting or a 30 minute long meeting or whatever, there's, a, there's usually three or four moments of truth. And that's really what you're trying to get to. Um, and I think what a lot of you know, if you're just getting into sales or you don't have a lot of experience there, what will happen is you'll have an hour long meeting that is amazing and it's all going really well. And then there at the very end, you know, for some reason, some SVP will walk in, he'll ask like one question and then you'll have like a 20 second little thing there and he'll walk out and you'll walk out of that meeting. You'll go, this whole meeting was great. It's definitely going on to the next phase or whatever it is. But that if that 20 seconds didn't go well, the, then it, it's not going on to the next phase. It didn't happen. That was one moment of truth where we did not shine. And so, Adam, you know, so I think that's one of the learning lessons is like, let's hone in on those moments of truth where a good meeting is just sort of table stakes, but it's really, we, we need to be ready for those moments of truth for when they come up. Cause that's really when the high performers, I think outperform everybody else is they know how to answer those questions, address whatever it is, you know, those sorts of things. And so eventually we started getting it down to what were the moments of truth in this call that really tipped it in one way or the other. Yeah, those are those are, are called the oh, oh shit moments. Excuse my language. Uh, That's right. <laughs> you know, where you had a right. great call, everything was great, but there was one thing that scuttled the whole thing and now you're screwed. That's right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So you guys pinpoint on that. And and that's really hard. Also with the SDRs, they could be making hours of calls and, you know, just having very brief interactions with people. That's right. And, and so yep. what you want to try to do is you take all this, all this game tape and almost edit it down to make it somewhat useful for coaching and training, right? That's right. Yeah. And, and that's the, you know, it's, it's a similar kind of concept, whether you're having a 30 minute call, hour long call or a three minute call, right? It's like, what were the moments of truth there? You know, when from a, from a short call, that would be even just the first moment of truth is, did you get their attention right in the beginning? And, you know, just, or did they just instantly go, oh, who is this? I got to get off the phone. So like, yeah. you know, and that's, and, and that's from a, from an outbound perspective, I, you know, the question I always ask is, are you creating curiosity? We get off the phone. Did, was that person curious enough? And, or were they just kind of like, get, get out of here? Cause if you can create curiosity, now you get to give it a little bit of walk away and they're like, wait, 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 what are you talking about? Te tell me more. And that's what can help tee it up. So anyways, similar, similar concept just applied into kind of different, depends on where you are in the sales stage, but same, same kind of concepts. Right. And then, so, and what you're trying to do is focus in on the things that can move the needle as opposed to having all this material that you have to go through. To, to oh, find yeah, that, right? totally. And that's, I mean, if anybody's ever opened up an hour long, you know, MP4 and it opens up in QuickTime <laughs> or whatever it is, it's really daunting. You just kind of look at it and you don't know whether to click around and should I go 30 seconds forward or three minutes forward or whatever it is. And so, you know, the way that we process the call, we do transcription, you know, we start to give key highlights that we found, uh, it, you know, you can get through an hour long demo in about five, five to eight minutes. Um, on average. And so now it, it takes you five to eight minutes to find those key moments of truth, listen into what they are, rather than kind of having to click around and maybe just miss it entirely. Because you might say, oh, that call went really well. But for some reason, you clicked over that 20 seconds where so and so walked in the room and asked a question or whatever it was. Yeah. And I, I think this is so critical. There's there's different solution providers popping up that are doing doing stuff like this. And, and it's so critical because how it you know how are you supposed to really act as a coach with your team if you don't have any game tape right that's right i mean it's it's, it's amazing <laughs> and if someone's just sort of like getting started with this and and they maybe they don't have the budget right now to to get a specific solution provider but they want to start to experiment with this can you give them any tips on how they can sort of dip their toes in the water of in this area and then and then you know as they build up their experience they could start talking to people like you yeah so actually what we would do before any of this kind of technology came out i know it's it's super for, you know, it's free, so it's good. That that's good. But you actually just take your phone out and record what's going on. And so if you're if you're you know have a go to meeting or something like that, you pull your phone out and hit record, and then that way you have kind of your own personal recording on it, and you can go back and listen to it. So when you actually get the and you know and now you know since it was your recording, you can jump to those key moments where that happened. But that's you know the 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 other old school kind of way of doing that is if you have two of you 
maybe two SDRs, you listen in on each other's calls. And so you rotate, you know, we would do call rotations where you make a call, I make a call, you make a call, I make a call, but we put it on speakerphone because now we're both listening to each other as we're talking. And, and I, that's almost like an incubator there. Cause you do that with it with someone else for a couple of hours and it, your cold calls get way better because you're kind of performing for somebody. Once one of you finally get, you know, you're kind of rotating. So you're both just leaving voice messages back and forth. Right. But eventually someone gets someone on the phone and then after it happens, and you hang up, then you both go, man, what happened there? What do we do right? What do we do wrong? Because you're in that moment and you really remember when it happens. That's really the key. You got you to be in that moment when it happens to recognize whether it could have gone one way or the other. And that's kind of what our game film does is it helps you drop back into that moment over and over and over. But if you don't have that kind of functionality, then, then get, a, get a partner and start making calls back and forth. At least do something. Just start. And then when That's you're ready right. to move up, you know, move up to something like No Ninja, then go for it. And, yeah. and, you know, that is so hard to do, I think, for a lot of people because nowadays, you know, we mostly communicate through texting and, you know, sure. Snapchat and, you know, just shooting little notes to each other. And we've kind of lost the art of calling people and especially calling people out of the blue. That's right. You know, it, it, but but to sit down with your colleague and and be in a room together and do it, I think at least you're kind of relying on each other a little bit. Like, I, hey, I'm going to screw up, but so are you. So let's do it. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah absolutely. I mean, that's yeah. the other thing. You got to have no fear. I mean, that's the you, you want you want quality, right? And and yeah. that's you gotta you gotta run through the ringer to to become quality. It doesn't you know volume is helpful, uh, and and that's what's gonna you know it's that repetition. Uh, you know, think about the same way as sports. Like you got to have the right form to shoot a free throw. And then, so that's like one part and then you got to shoot a million free throws. But like, if you shoot a million free throws with bad form, you're just not going to hit those. You're just not going to get that quality because yeah, you got the, you got the drive to make a bunch of calls, but how do you even know they're, they're going well, right? How do you even know, like you said the right thing? Like maybe, maybe someone else would be like, why don't you lead with this question first instead of that question? And just try that for 20 times. You know, you, you, you get into this sort of experimental mode. And I think like, that's really important. Personally, that's really important for, for just getting going anytime you start a new role as an SDR because it's a new domain. You don't know all the all the domain space and knowledge around there yet. And so like it's almost focusing on quality and then but then banging out quantity to help, you know, reinforce whether it's working or not. August 30th, 2018, San Francisco. The Sales Development Conference. The first and only live conference 100 percent focused and dedicated to sales development. Join over 300 of the top minds in sales development for a full day of learning, forging new relationships, and creating the next generation of sales development excellence. This year, we have dedicated tracks for sales development leadership, as well as a track for individual sales development representatives, including a full day of ultra-useful hands-on training. Bring your whole team to get the tools, research, and connections you need to accelerate your career and push your sales development program forward. Accelerate your growth at the Sales Development Conference 2018. Go to tenbound.com slash conference to get your tickets today. That's tenbound.com slash conference. Yeah, that's so interesting because if, if you bring it to sports, like I think about golf and you have to start really slowly in, in golf I, when you're right. first starting out to make sure that you have the precise swing because if you don't have it, right from the beginning, you get into one little bad habit that will just screw yep. up your game for the rest of your life. So it doesn't matter if you take like 40 million swings, if you turn, right. It, turn it right, <laughs> right, or if somebody doesn't go back to square one and like show you actually how to do it, you're yep. never going to get it. So, and I think that's tough with SDRs because a lot of times it's seen as like an entry level position and, and a lot of programs it's like, here, dude, just go figure it out. Like here, here's a phone. That's right. You know, here's Salesforce. Like, just go figure it out. There's no, there's none of that beginning part of like molding someone in to be able to do it right. And so, yep. You know, what and I mean? that's and it's challenging too because you know, depending on what size organization you come into, you may be one of a of a hiring class, right? Maybe there's five of you, ten of you, twenty of you being hired, and so it's really hard to you know, get that, that level of attention that might be necessary. The good news is, is with some, you know, self 
coaching self, you know, sort of a motivation, you actually can get there still because it's not at the same time, it's not rocket science, right? There's no, there's no keys to figuring it all out in terms of like, what's the silver bullet. It's just kind of learning that cadence, learning your own voice, learning the way that you speak and saying, well, what, you know, what is, what creates that curiosity with people out of me? What is disarming, you know, to people when I start to say certain things or, you know, that sort of idea. And, and really that can be done. It just, those are the guys that I've seen that are really successful is they, they really take it to heart in that way. And then, you know, all of a sudden they're making half as many cold calls as the other guy and they're booking twice as many demos because they really took a time to, you know, really hone in on who, how they call, how they speak, how they talk, uh, and, and really kind of take time to perfect that. Yeah. So that, that's a really good point. You know, what if someone's listening, they came into the job and there wasn't a lot of training, there wasn't a lot of coaching, but they still want to be successful. Okay. So first, like they take the three top people out to lunch and go, yep. go like pick right. their brains, start Back recording lunch. calls. What else should they, what else should they do to be successful? Do you think? Yeah. So, I mean, I always do try and look at who's successful and then yeah. go talk to them about it and figure out what it is that's making them successful. One of the things that I think that is sometimes overlooked is just is the amount of hard work that it's going to take. You know, you can do things at night. You can do things in the morning. Most people don't like to get up early. And when work's done, they don't want to think about work. Most of the time, Friday afternoons, people at least, you know, it depends on where, what company you're at and whether you're in San Francisco or whatever. But sometimes Friday afternoons is a, is a quick time, you know, to where people take half days and those sorts of things. But, you know, a half a day every Friday, you know, if you work through that half day it, that, where everybody else is kind of taking time off, I mean, you know, that's an extra five hours that everyone else isn't getting. And, you know, that's, that's an extra 10% work. Actually, take, if you got, you got 10 half days in the whole week and you work one more half day than everybody else, well, you're, you're working 10% harder than everybody. And so I think that sometimes, especially in an SDR role, if you're coming out of, you know, college or, you know, you, you, typically, in my opinion, school, it's, it's made to, to make you feel like you can do anything. And that's just, you, you know, you come out because you get all these good grades and, and you, no matter what class you take, you get there. And so you, we kind of get used to things being easy. And so now you walk into a situation, and all of a sudden it's just not easy. And now that's maybe, and you know, unless you've faced, you know, this sort of situation in other places, it's one of the first times you've actually had to consider that and kind of go, man, I'm not really good at this, just walking right in. I might have the skill for it, but how do I get good at this? I mean, that's, you know, that's the other thing that's unique about being an SDR is it's most of the time sort of an entry level position where you're just kind of getting this, your feet wet in the world that doesn't care whether you succeed or not, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, listening to that, that's great advice, by the way. I mean, if, if, if anything that people take from this, it's, you know, while other people are snoozing, sleeping, they're hungover, that's when you can accelerate, right. man. I mean, and, and you can get yeah. way better. I, I was thinking about it yesterday. I was at my son's Taekwondo class and literally all the parents and siblings that were there were looking at their phones. It, while the class was happening. And I was like, my God, I mean, like, I almost had this epiphany that if you get <laughs> off your phone, <laughs> like, and put yeah. your phone in your pocket, and and like, make eye contact and smile at people, you have a huge advantage over like 90% yeah. of the population, <laughs> because we're yeah. all wa wa walking around like zombies. But another thing that I was thinking of is momentum. Momentum is is really tough in the Cute. SDR role, because yeah. it's like, you know, you're, you feel like you're, you're putting out all this effort, you're calling all these people, right? And you're coming in every day. And you're just like, you come in and every day is almost like a new day. So, yep. you know, yep. how do you how do you recommend people keep that momentum up with that hard work? Yeah, it's interesting. Like, uh, you know, I always say there's a few different things that I would do. Um, first, one talking about momentum, one of the things that we would do that that I always thought was was really helpful is, you know, as soon as you get off of a call and you booked a demo, or if you're an AE, and as soon as you have a really good demo or a really good conversation, it's you know, it's moving on to the next stage, you got to get back on the phone again. Like, it's like, because you've got yes. this high, right, of, holy cow, I just booked a demo, this is awesome, I'm blah, 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 and it's like, cool, go make 20 more calls right now, because that is going to project through your voice, that's going to project through everything that you're doing, because you're, you're super confident in this very moment, because you just booked one, and so let's not take time off 
let's celebrate it. Yeah, you know, like let's get fired up, but like let's also ride that wave that you just that little bit of momentum that you just created. Because you know, and and typically what we would find is if you did that and you stayed focused on it, you'd book at least another one in the next ten calls. Like if you got them on the phone, because you were just in this moment where you're like, "Yep, we're awesome. You want to talk to me, right?" And they're like, "Yeah, we do." And, and like I don't I don't know. It's just it's hard to hard to describe. But so so for little bits of momentum, you. you know, that's yeah. we always encourage that. And then, you know, for, for staying moment, for keeping momentum just in life, in your work life, it kind of, it's going to spill over from everything else. I always say, you know, you got to get into a workout regimen because uh, age is coming and a desk job is real and the pounds will come on. Uh, but at the same time, <laughs> uh, keeping, keeping disciplined around, you know, working out and eating healthy, that actually keeps you disciplined around your work, your work life too. So kind of switching from a mentality of it's not a sprint, it's a marathon, right? And so you have these moments where you're going to go really hard, but then if you do that, you need moments where you're going to take a little bit of time off or, you know, take some time to rest. And, you know, so your, your normal work day should be much more like a marathon and less like a sprint, you know, I love hopefully. I love that. And I think a lot of SDRs, they burn the candle at both ends big time. I mean, they're, they're just right. like, you know, they, I've seen it, like they come in and they're all like jacked up and drinking Red Bulls and just like, ah, I'm going to make a, <laughs> I'm going to call 500 yeah. people. And then, and then the next day they come in and they've still got the Red Bull, but they're just sitting there staring at the computer and they're just like, yeah. Uh, and, yeah. and they probably went out all night. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and like just <laughs> barely got it together to, to come back in. And, and it's like, dude, you just lost all your momentum. And I know right. it's really hard to hear. It's a lot easier for me because it's 20 years ago when I was in that sure. scenario. But, you know, I, it's almost like, Dude, write down a list of all the negative things that you're doing and then make an opposite list and try to focus on the opposite list. Like, what are all yep. the good things? Eating right. I mean, I, dude, I know that I sound like a parent, but it, it's so, <laughs> it's, hey, it's true. If yeah. you're eating right, if you're getting enough sleep, if you're, eat, you know, exercising regularly and not going out all night, again, it's like that cell phone thing. You're going to be way ahead of That's like, right the other SDRs that are on the team because it's like, yeah. uh, it's like, so I, I do enjoy sailing. I like selling and sailing. Uh, so in sailing, you know, if you take a different, a little bit of a different angle, you're, you know, at the very beginning, the two boats, you know, they're kind of really close to each other. Right. But over the course of a, of, of an entire run, by the time it's over, the boats could be a, a mile away from each other. And yeah. so it's those little tweaks that you can do where in the very beginning, it looks like you're with everybody else. But with those little tweaks over the year, two years, whatever, you look back and all of a sudden you're in a very, very different place than someone else. And so I think that that's like, you know, and, and be a little more structured. You know, I, I'd say I, I always like to do call blocks because making, making calls is, is really difficult, right? And so you just say, all right, well, from 9 to 10.30 and then in the afternoon from 1 to three or something. Those are my call blocks and everything else is set for everything else. And so now you don't feel like you got to make calls all day, but when those call blocks come, you know, email's gone, everything else is gone and you're just in the zone kind of grooving. So I think that it's finding that sort of uh, rhythm that you like, you know, whether on the East coast or West coast time zones matter and that sort of thing. But you know, it's, it's uh, you find out that groove that you like to where, you know, you can go hard, but then also you take those rests, hopefully without, without crushing your productivity by going out all night or something like that. Right. Exactly. I mean, I, and that's a good tip for managers listening to it's like the if you walk around and and look at the calendars of the sdrs on the team like there should be blocks on there you know where it's like right. this is my sacred time we know that people are at their desk super early in the morning and i'm just going to crush the phones during this time don't don't you know no emails no nothing just go ahead and do it and then hold yourself yep. accountable to actually do it and then you know as soon as you're done boom turn it off go take a break grab some coffee, go for a walk and then come back and, you know, follow up, you know, with the emails or, or yep. you know, yeah, I, I actually really like that way of working for anybody who knows anything about engineering engineers do that too. Cause there's a lot of planning that goes into building a new product or building a new feature. And so, but once they actually start building, maybe we all know the stereotype, you know, headphones go on, right. And if an engineer has their headphones on, you just don't talk to them cause they're in the zone. And I think that sales has the same thing. It's just not thought about in that same way where if you're in cold call mode i mean this is you know it it takes some it takes you, you got to stay on it because you can very easily be distracted like who wouldn't want to be distracted from making another cold call and so you know having those moments where you decide yep i'm getting in the zone and i'm going to go after 
after it. I mean, that's, you know, and, and then your volumes will just from a volume play, you'll probably make more calls than everybody else. Cause you just have that dedicated time and, and you won't get it. You know, you won't be distracted as often. Yeah. And, and you know, this stuff isn't easy. I mean, I still struggle with it, to be honest. Like if I've got some big deliverable that I have to put together for a client and I know that if I just like, you know, the Pomodoro method, it's like, you know, I set a timer for 90 minutes and you're just like, all I'm going to work on is this for the next 90 minutes. It's hard, yep. man. I mean, you look up yeah. and it's been 10 minutes and you're like, yeah, what's, <laughs> you know, what's going on over on the news here? Where, yeah. where, 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 where am I at with Twitter? I mean, you're already starting to get like pulled over and, yep. you know, it's, for sure. it's easier said than done. But <laughs> and it's a, it's a muscle too. That's the other thing that people, you know, it's, it's your first time you do it, it's going to be really hard. Even the first week or two weeks you do it, it's going to be really hard. But if you keep that diligence after a month, I think they say it takes 30 days to make a habit. I don't know. The number seems to change all the time, but whatever. Either way, you know, after about a month, you get in this habit where that just is your daily regimen, and then it's much, much easier. So I think that's also the other thing is you know staying disciplined. Discipline begets more discipline, right? And that that's that's it's like a muscle that gets built up over time. Yeah, and and the thing is, like everyone listening to that, you should listen to Matt because obviously, you know, a successful guy started a company, uh, had a great great run there. Now he's on his second company; it's doing really, really well. Obviously, he's doing something right. He's got the credibility, so listen to this guy. (laughs) And uh, and also, you know, a couple of resources that I think of in this conversation is there's a great book called The Compound Effect by a guy named Darren Hardy. And it was based on another book called The Slight Edge by Jeff Olson. And they talk about just these things that we're talking about where, you know, that trajectory can split at some point. And, you know, if you if if you're doing the right things and you're doing those little disciplines every day, you know, right now yeah. it doesn't it doesn't show up immediately, but over the course of like your sailing analogy, over the course of a few miles, your world's apart from other people. Yep. You end up number one on the leaderboard versus like out looking for another job. So, <laughs> yep. And the only other thing I would add to that, I mean, this is something I wish I had told myself, you know, 15 years ago, 10 years ago is to read, read more, like always read. And like, don't just read necessarily just business books, find stuff you like, because it actually makes you both it becomes enjoyable after a while. You're kind of like, oh, this is cool fiction or this is, you know, you find different things you like, but also it makes you a better conversationalist. I honestly can't tell you how many times I've been chatting with a prospect and all of a sudden, you know, cryptocurrency comes up, John Rockefeller comes up, you know, different sorts of things in <laughs> history. And I, now, now I can reference different different battles or different things. I'm a really big, I love history. So I like, I, I listen to a lot of history, but you know, and all of a sudden that comes up in the middle of a conversation and you tell this really cool story about John Rockefeller when he was building Standard Oil and you you just do it because you like it. I like it. Uh, you know, I think that's a cool story. But then you get done telling that story and, and I'm not, you know, by the end, someone goes, man, this person, they're well read. They're smart. They're, it, it just builds credibility. And I'm not even saying that I'm telling those stories to build credibility in anybody's mind. I just really like reading and it brings up points of conversation. And so find something you like to read and just always have a book, whether it's audible, like audio books or reading, you know, just figure out whatever works for you. But just always have at least one book going because it always gives you something to talk about. Well, exactly. And, and you know, I've heard that sales is really a transference of energy and, and passion, you know, like you're trying, you got to bring some kind of passion to the conversation. And, and it's, it's like, in order to have that, you can't just be like, hi, I'm calling, you know, for the, 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 the you know, I mean, you're, you're like, it, it yeah. shows up in your voice. And when you talk about reading and, and the things that you enjoy, I can feel that passion. And that's a transference of the energy of sales. You know what I mean? I do. Yeah. And it's, it's sometimes you won't even talk about your product at all. And by the end, <laughs> someone goes, man, I, I want to learn more. And you're like, yeah. whoa, okay. Uh, well, I haven't even told you anything yet. So I'm glad you want to know more, you know, cause we got on some tangent or whatever it is, but that's, I, I like that sort of analogy around like the tran- like transferring energy. Cause I think that's certainly true. Like if you, if you stay well around it, and, and unfortunately, you know, that means there's no silver bullet in this whole thing, right? It's like, becoming a holistic person, having interests, staying diligent, like a lot of those things actually transfer over because at the the end of the day, sales is still a relational thing. And you know, you, it's, it's table stakes, working hard, domain knowledge, product expertise, it's table stakes. Like that's not, 
that's not the thing that sets anybody else apart. Uh, what sets them apart, I think, is you know how relatable they are, some of those soft skills. But thankfully, those can all be worked on. And and it, but it really has to come from internal. It can't be, it can't be as a means to an end, right? It has to actually be the decision that you want to just to to be a better person. You want to learn more. You want to do these things. And that that actually just transfers over not just into sales, but in all your relationships, like. That's the other cool part about it, right? So, and you're if you're if you're an SDR and just coming out of college and you have, you don't have a wife and kid yet, you have so much time. You have yeah. so much time that's still at your disposal to really use. So, you know, you utilize that time well because if and when you get married and if and when you have kids, a lot of that time gets shrunk and you'll look back and go, man, I, I could have done so much more. Or you know, I'm glad I spent all that time. Whatever it is. Anyways, I know we're uh, again. I feel like a yeah. parent too now that I'm saying I, it. But I know. It, no, it's true. You know. Make make yeah. make that make that double list, man. Like Netflix binge watching, partying too much, going out all night. Like make the opposite one and focus there. I'm telling you, man. Like it will make a huge difference in your life. You, yeah. you will thank Matt and I for doing this. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> but and you know it's funny because. It, it sales really is a relational thing. And, you know, you could, I was in a trap the other day. I got on a call with a guy and I started asking him all these questions about his sales development program. And, you know, I was just genuinely interested because it's a topic that obviously really interests me of how sure. people do it and what's going on and all this stuff. And all of a sudden the guy's like, whoa, 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 like, wait a minute. Like, why are you, at I mean, you know, I was too passionate with all the questions and it was like, I could tell, all right. I just screwed up. Like this guy doesn't like me. <laughs> like, and, and and if they don't like you, then they're probably never going to do business with you. So I was like, damn it! I just totally screwed that up, man. Because I got <laughs> overly passionate. So I don't know. Yeah, you gotta yeah. you gotta yeah. balance it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. There's a and that's and that's we all make those right. That's a, that's a yeah. common thing that happens. And that's and to your point, there's this as you have conversations with different personas, right? Like there's certain things, certain yeah. ways you would speak to a VP that you wouldn't speak, you know, to an account executive or whoever it is. And and that's it. But we all we've all been there. I mean, that's you know, it never goes away. You just try and reduce the frequency as much as possible. You know, I'm still I'm still there. And I can tell you, I mean, you know, and everyone on the call, like learning the sales skills and the SDR skills, even when you've become an entrepreneur and you're running the whole company, you still are constantly selling. I mean, oh, in one way, shape or form. And then you go home, you got your wife and kids, you got to sell them on everything you're doing. Then you go out, you got to right. sell everybody. So it, it's a great, great skill set. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And, you know, I'll be, I'll be in San Francisco in about a month and I'm going there for a week and that's, you know, I've got to convince my wife that it's okay that I'm gone for a week. And that's, you know, that's not an easy thing to do either. That's a, you, oh that's, a, that's an opportunity with a certain sales stage and it has to, I'm trying to get it to close one, you know? So that's a, it's all translatable. It's all transferable. <laughs> Good luck with that, man. Well, dude, this has Thanks. been awesome. We're coming up on the hour. It, what's next for you guys? What are you working on now? What are you excited about? And uh, how do we get in touch with you? Man, we're doing some really cool stuff. We're bringing on about a customer a week right now, um, which is pretty exciting. Uh, like I said, we'll be hiring for sales in the next you know, this year, hopefully this quarter, maybe next quarter, we'll start the first one off. You know, we, it's funny because I'm going about this company bootstrapped. The last one we raised a bunch of VC, and so right now this one's bootstrapped. Just and it's been it's been totally different, and that's that's also been resonant in the market in a different way too. Which, you know, I know in Silicon Valley, profitable and bootstrapped are like four letter words. So, but it's been really interesting because uh, it's resonating out in the marketplace and everything. So, anyways, if you if you want to check us out, you can go to NoteNinja.com. My email is just Matt at NoteNinja.com. Um, and yeah, if you're interested in checking us out, you know, we do startup packages, we do some things, and if you think you could use it, just at least ping me. For, if it's not for now could be for later and either way i like connecting you know cool people yeah yeah we'll see when you come out this podcast will probably drop around that time so it could be perfect and matt thanks so much for coming on the show tons of great uh great takeaways for the audience and really appreciate it man thank you so much thanks david thanks for uh thanks for inviting me i appreciate it, it was good it was a good conversation definitely take care thank you for listening to the sales development podcast the only audio forum 100% focused and dedicated to sales development with your host, David Delaney. Please be sure to subscribe to the show on YouTube and take a moment to leave us a review on iTunes. Your support makes our show possible. If you are struggling with your sales development program, contact us at 10bound.com for a no-obligation exploratory call. Again, that's 10bound.com.